hello all uh, welcome to my youtube channel in this video we are going to see how we can able to connect uh, mysql with the blazor web application in the previous videos we have seen how we can able to download and install mysql and now we can able to getting started with blazor server project so in this video i'm going to click on this uh, create new project i will be selecting one new project here that is blazor server app uh, template click on next then give it a name then choose authentication type uh, we are going to see this individual accounts click on create So the project has been created and we are going to see this iOS Express. We can change this later. And uh, we are going to have two main uh, folders that is data and migrations folder. In this migrations, it will def automatically deploy uh, my SQL like Microsoft SQL migrations, but we don't need them. So I'm going to delete these folders. We will be able to generate these folders in the later video. And then we will be having this application DB context as well. And we are going to let like implement this db context for mysql so for that we need to install one new get package called pomelo entity framework core so i'm going to click on this project right click and then click on manage new get packages and click on this browse section and type pomelo entity framework here you can see that uh, pomelo entity framework core dot mysql is there once you click on this, you can able to install this one. It will install all the dependencies of that uh, uh, NuGet package. Once this is installed, we are going to change the uh, app settings.json file because we are going to pass the connection string from here. So this is basically the connection string of my MS SQL. We are going to remove this one and we are going to add our, uh, we are going to add our uh, mysql connection string we can get it from the mysql server so i will previously in the previous video we have seen how we can able to install mysql workbench so if you don't know how to install mysql workbench you can see that video so once i click on this you will be able to open that mysql workbench with the pre-configured mysql server so this is the our, this is our server and we are having these three uh, these three databases so we are going to like uh, we are going to create a user here and account new user i am going to name it as a dot net and then i'm going to name uh, like give password as uh, i'm giving i'm giving like uh, one two three four five six and the password is one two three four five six only so once this uh, i think it needs strong password so i'm going to give it as dot net one double nine three star So as you can see we have created the uh, user called .NET so we are going to give 
uh, here that is server name that is localhost and then user id is the dot net and then password is dot net one and nine three star and then we are going to name a database like we can whatever the name we want to give we can able to give here so that is i am going to give it as dot net iphone mysql as a database name so once we give this we are going to like configure this uh, uh, mysql thing in the startup program.cs so here it is saying that uh, use sql server connection string but we are going to use use my mysql so we are going to change this to mysql connection string and here you can see it is uh, throwing an error like it is uh, the error is because of uh, we are not going to we are not uh, passing the mysql server version so we are going to give it as mysql server version as well so after connection string we are going to give a mysql server version that is server new server version that is new version which version we are going to use is uh, we can go to this mysql server and then we can able to see the server and server status once you go here here you can see 8.0.35 is the server version we are going to give the same that is 8 comma 0 comma 35 as the server version and here it is not server version we are going to use it as a mysql server version so now it is not throwing any error so we are good to go and the next thing we have to do is so we have to generate the migration uh, files for this so for, for that we are going to use this tools tab under the tools tab you can go to this nuget package manager and then package manager console here what we are going to use is uh, we are going to uh, use the dot net uh, commands here to generate the uh, migration files To create migrations we need to like give this command add migration and this is initial migration i'm going to use it as initial and click on enter it will generate the migration folders for us so once the build is successful we can able to like it is making an exception here that is method Shop assembly does not have an implementation, so I think we are using wrong version of uh, Nugget package Pomelo. So we are going to degrade that uh, Pomelo entity framework Nugget package that is in the installation. This is using 6 7 so we are going to use this 6 6 version So we have successfully created this uh, migrations folder here. Here you can see the migration folder has been created and it is creating the tables here. That is ASP.NET roles, ASP.NET users, 
and then climbs rules climbs and yes we need to use your climbs and those kind of uh, all the predefined table from the ASP.NET core authentication has been created uh, like the migration process has been completed so we need to update the database according to it so we need to to update the database we have a command called update database so once we click on this one once we use this command it will generate the database for us so access generate user dot net uh, dot net mysql so we doesn't have access we doesn't give the access to this database so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to copy this database name and we are going to create a database here So database has been created we go to administration and users roles preferences once we go to this uh, .NET role we are going to change the uh, login is fine administration roles schema privileges and add entry and we are going to have this selected schema uh, .NET MySQL and click on ok we are going to give all the rights here This .NET user will have all the rights to create, modify, and uh, uh, those DDL and DML commands. All the permissions this uh, .NET user will have. So we are going to give all the permissions for this. Uh, so we give these permissions to this .NET user. We can able to perform this operation here. So it is generated in all the scripts for, for us. Uh, we don't have to do anything like uh, the migration has been updated. You can go and see whether the tables are created or not in the database uh, MySQL server. Here we go to tables and it has been created all the tables and all the schema for us. So we'll go to your studio and run this project. So here you can see it is giving us register login and about so once we click on this register option we can able to register ourselves so I'm going to give this uh, a name like in the email so So once we give the name and password and confirm password, it will register and the register. Once we click on this register, that uh, that our credentials and everything will store under this database. And so this this page we can able to configure with the email sender. So if we configure the email sender, that uh, OTP or whatever the code you have generated in the uh, email sender that will send to your email. And once you click on that upload uh, option there. You can able to log in here so those kind of authentication practices we can able to make in the future in, the, in these tutorials so uh, my email account is has been confirmed so once i click on this login option So now I can able to like log in with the this Gmail and this email account. So once I click on this uh, .NET Blazor uh, application template, we'll have all these uh, default uh, routes here. 
so we can able to like see the profile and email password and two factor authentication personal data all those things has been generated automatically so like this way we can able to connect the mysql with the uh, datnet in the future videos we are going to see how we can able to perform CRUD operations on this uh, uh, mysql database in the same project and also we can able to see how we can able to generate models for uh, this particular project like uh, uh, these are all the models uh, which are which are all already there exist like in the default project template but uh, we want to customize those things and how we can able to like uh, do modifications all we can able to see in the next uh, coming videos thank you